and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy Saturday. Look at all of you saying hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> hi, Shim, hi, Hillary. Hi, Aisha. Hi, Amy, Barbara. Hey, Terry. Hey, Donna. Hey, Julie, Blair, Margaret. How's it going? Happy Saturday or so today. Hi, Christina. Hi, Margaret. Did I say hi, Margaret? <laughs> I did. <laughs> hey, Mullen. Welcome, welcome. Are you guys excited to finish the arbor? Woo. We're gonna have a little trickiness with the placket because I cut out that little stripe detail, the selvage, and it doesn't really line up with the way it's gonna sew. So I was gonna get your guys' opinion on it and see. I have some ideas, but I don't know. Hello, Laurel. Welcome. Hi from California. <laughs> is my machine on? Yeah, it is on. What are you guys making today? Are you guys sewing on Saturday? Are you glad the week's done? Are you staying cool? It is very hot here. Swimsuits, that seems very appropriate <laughs> given the weather. It's been just really warm here. Knitting, maybe a quilt back later. Nice, that sounds very productive. Sitting by the pool, now that sounds nice. I'm not much of a swimmer and I've, we've had a pool before but I just wasn't that into it. But um, I loved looking at it and I loved the slide. We had a slide, that was fun. Trying to get your serger going after, oh no. It, oh no. <laughs> I know you have a hammer and you're willing to use it, but it's not for sergers. You're packing up stuff in your craft room so it doesn't get affected by the bathroom. Oh, cool. You've been, you've been kind of going through your room lately, right, Aisha? So this will help, right? Kind of less to do, hopefully. You're going to try your modified shirt sleeve and your muslin, cool. Still waiting for summer weather. Oh, well, you're on the beach. That's the irony of living coastal, isn't it? People, ex people look at California like in, in TV shows and they think that it's sweltering at the beach here. And it's just not. <laughs> it's cloudy, burns off at 11 a.m., gets warm in the southern beaches, but most of the California beaches are beautiful, gorgeous, cool, <laughs> not hot. <laughs> You're wearing full clothes after you have lunch. Priorities, Donna, it's been raining here all day. Oh my, I can't even imagine that. You've been in your PJs all day? <laughs> Hi, Julie, what? <laughs> Still making bathing suits, you're fine as I go. Nice, summer of cover stitch. I love hearing that. You're just trying to figure out PCC. Oh, I knew. 
I think I feel like I read so many typos in things and I f get foiled by them myself. So there's occasionally I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's the blessing of being coastal. Exactly right, Amy. You bought an old Serger 20U yesterday. Congratulations. That's exciting. Yay, Suzanne, welcome. Ah, is that true, Christina? That makes sense. <clears throat> Can I recommend the binding test for the cover stitch machine? Yeah. Hey, are you using binding in your swimsuit making, Blair? Because it is really cool. <laughs> it's miserable there. I don't know. It was 102 at my house yesterday. It's supposed to be 110 nearby in Chico, which is like 20 minutes from me. Up here in Paradise, it um, is a little warmer as well. Um, usually it would be like 10 degrees cooler. It's not. It's like 105. So that's Fahrenheit. I, so uh, my, I, when I left for work yesterday, I looked at all my little tender, my tenderer plants on my porch. I was like, all right, everybody, are you good? And um, they all looked great. I came home and there were a couple that did not look great. And I was like, oh no. I was like immediately like watering them, <laughs> hoping. So everything needs a little more, a little extra water. I got some new books coming today. Um, I was looking for this one on dragonflies because we have, it's dragonfly season at my house. There's thousands of them. And um, we were trying to identify them because we've gotten so many cool looking ones. And so I found this used dragonfly guide for California and the Southwest that arrives today. But t t I also got a couple like container gardening and houseplant ones. I'm so excited. They're going to be there when I get home. 107 by five here. Yeah, Barbara, it's warmer where you live than here, for sure. It's finally broken here, 80 degrees, when it's been near 100, yeah. Oh, we don't have humidity. <clears throat> yeah, we did, Laurel. <laughs> I'm actually right in it here, yeah. Oh, cool, Blair already has the attachment, Aisha. The new the humidity in New Jersey, New Jersey is awful. <laughs> I, I really loved living in Colorado and I loved the big sky there. If you don't know what that means, it's the, the sky seems higher there. The clouds are really high um, and you're already higher up anyway because you're already at 5,000 feet minimum. And then the sky ceiling seems just much higher. It's just big sky and you can see really far because most of Colorado is, is plains. There's just a mountain range at one end. And so, um, but the afternoon thunderstorms and the big sky, oh, I loved that. We get that kind of effect here. We're right up against the mountains. We're like in the Sierra Nevadas and, um, but not quite like Wyoming or Idaho or Colorado. Quite cool there too, Mullen. Rain showers, no heat wave at all, yeah. There's no pleasing you. <laughs> I don't try. <laughs> I just try and be useful. <laughs> Hi, Eliza. How's it going? Hey, you're usually busy on Saturdays. All right, let's get sewing. We're going to, uh, I think, uh, I only have the sleeves. <laughs> we did so much the other day. This shirt really goes together quickly. Um, and uh, we're going to put the sleeves on. I'm going to use flat felled seams. I'll try and remember to tell you what to do if you're not doing flat filled seams. Um, so we have sleeves, placket, cuff, hems. And uh, I think I'll have time for buttons and buttonholes. So I have my home machine ready to go. Um, so we can do that too. So this is the Arbor shirt by Merchant and Mills. And this project was given to us by Hearts Fabric, which is Santa Cruz, whoop whoop. Um, and there's a little 10% off code for anything on the heart site for just about anything, you know, you can't buy a gift card. <laughs> so, right, Suzanne, there's always stuff to do. I don't feel like I ever, you know, people say that like, oh, it can wait till tomorrow. It'll still be there. And I used to think that's the exactly why I want to get it done. Now I kind of get that. I understand that sentiment. I am a lot more relaxed. I do not need to do everything right away. It feels great, you know? All right. So, if I were setting, if I were sewing the sleeve with French seams or straight stitch and serger or something like that, straight stitch and whatever finishing technique, I would do the, the side seam here. I would do the underarm seam and the placket of the sleeve. 
<clears throat> and then I would set the sleeve on. I like doing it that way. That's my preferred way. Um, I feel like you get a, a better, you get a better sleeve function, you know, like, cause it's, it's like its own little cylinder on the body. If you like doing it where you leave this open and attach the sleeve and then do the underarm, go for it. That's how the instructions are set up. So you are set for that. Um, French seam, or I'm not doing French seam, I'm doing flat felled seams, which are a little different. And I have a little short video on my website or on YouTube explaining the difference between French and flat and how to do it. Um, it's a really short video. So flat seams are stitched to the body of the garment. So they're flat to the garment, which is really nice. It gives you a little more space inside your garment. They're really clean. They're really fun to sew. And it's like, kind of like hemming. So remember this sleeve here is a two piece sleeve, which means that it has a seam down the, um, probably the back side, right? It should be the back side. Where's my notches? Why do I have to say that? I, well, I know I, don't, I didn't need it on this one. So I use the selvage of the fabric because I'm kind of hoping, hi Louise, how's it going? Kind of hoping that, you know, once this is sewn, this is our, this was our plan. This is the little placket, right? And so you would see this little hit of the stripe, right? This is the button closure and the cuff would go right here, right? But um, with because I'm doing a flat felled seam, it kind of complicates it a little bit. So the first thing we would do is we're gonna hem this side without the big extension. The side has the big extension, this one doesn't. We hem it right here. And then we would hem this over itself, right? And so what happens is that this little um, stripe, it gets covered up by this hem, see? So let me show you what this would look like. So this, it's gonna look more like this. Oh, and so when, um, I should also say, if you're ever wanting to do a side vent on a shirt using a flat felt seam, this is how you would do that. So if you just picture this being the side seam of a shirt, and the vent. Um, the only caveat is that my fabric here is fine either side, right? It doesn't really have a, a right side or a wrong side. So as long as your fabric is okay like that, or you do not mind seeing the wrong side, because this is like essentially, if this was the wrong side of the fabric and we hemmed it over, we'd see the wrong side on this under placket only, right? So when you're wearing the shirt, it looks like that. But you can see, look, my hem covers up our cute little stripe there. So I probably could have positioned the pattern piece. Um, I could have probably made it work if I had moved this over a little bit, moving this stripe kind of like right here. This is where it needed to be. So let's look at it if you wanna do this yourself for some reason. If we were to hem this right now, this is what's showing right here, right? So let's little put, a, put a little pin on what's showing here so we get our bearings. So when we unfold it, you can see that the pin is right here, right? So if I had lined this stripe up right here, it would have shown as the hem, right? So um, I could cheat and trim down my sleeve and move this placket over. I'm not a huge fan of doing that, but I do feel like the sleeve is big enough. I could do that, you know? My guy is pretty um, slender. So I don't think losing a quarter of an inch in sleeve volume is going to hurt any, right? So there's that. So we could do that. The other thing you could do is do your flat felled seam on, let's say, the, um, we'll pretend like we're working on the other sleeve. You could do it so that it was on the, going up the whole side of the sleeve here, right? Because that is what's gonna happen, right? If, if I hem this, you're gonna see this stripe pretty much going up the whole sleeve. I don't really have enough seam allowance there to do that, so I'm not going to. I didn't cut that. Well, it might not be straight. I'm not sure, I can't remember. So anyway. 
I just throw, I just thought I'd throw out a few options. If you were trying to do this and you were a little overwhelmed by trying to figure out how to do like a little cool contrast thing there, cut out just this little portion of your sleeve, you know, just cut out this and play around with it and draw on your piece of paper and hem it with, you know, with your fingers and, you know, pens and stuff and just kind of get your bearings of where that, at, that that's at. So, so I'm not sure where I've landed on this. We're just going to kind of see what happens and I'm going to react to whatever happens <laughs> because that's kind of how I do things. So the first thing I'm going to do, you're supposed to clip to the circle. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and avoid clipping right now. Um, I don't think we need it to be clipped. If we do, we can still do this later, but I think I can get away with not clipping. And what I like about not clipping, because the um, there's like the pin, the dot is like right here. You have a raw edge there, and so I think I'm just going to try and avoid that. So, all right, so we're going to um, sew this right sides together at the full seam allowance here for the French, or the flat felled seam. I'll probably make that mistake a bunch saying one thing when I meet the other. It's all wrinkled now. <laughs> oh, and the fabric, someone asked on my Instagram what this was and they were absolutely correct. This is the Japanese um, linen chambray on the um, heart site. I was gonna look it up for you guys and link it in the description. Let's see. It, I'm loving sewing with it. I'm not trying to advertise the fabric. I kind of am, but I'm not actually. But I, I'm totally serious. You guys know me <laughs> when I say what I, why is hearts is like 150% or 200%. Let's see, Japanese linen chambray. Let's see if I can find it. Let's make this, oh, it's at 175%. No wonder. Let's see. I wonder if it's this right here, this blue stone. Blue stone. I want to see if I can see that selvage. I can't. I feel like this is it. Let's see what you guys think. I think this is it. Pretty sure. All right. Uh, so I'm going to do this full seam allowance. <laughs> this little line's really throwing me off here. I'm trying to ignore it. That's my stellar cutting there. So I'm going to go down to where I think that dot is, right? So now we've enclosed it. And now I'm going to just hem the, uh, the, the top side. So this shorter placket here without the huge tab there, or tab, I don't know if tab is the right, the extension. Um, yeah, well, this will work. And I'm going to hem it so that the fold lines up with the seam. We'll go a little above where I stopped sewing like this. So you can see that's what it's looking like, just like that. And now we're at our little issue here. So... Now, oh, now the other thing I explored was if I hem this back on itself, that is a that is definitely something I can do. So see, look at this. If I hem this the wrong way, right? We'll just pin it so you get the full effect. You know, I'm a marketer, right? <laughs> I'm always trying to market sewing things. All right, so the flat felt seam, we're gonna trim this side down and then hem this over it like that and stitch it down. This is the wrong side of the sleeve, right? And we would do the same with this. 
but we would cover up that stripe. So now if I do this, if I hem this the wrong way, I still get that under the now, and look at, I have this cool stripe effect right there. But here's the drawback. I have a raw edge at the top right here of where I'm turning it back on itself. So that's the, that would be what my sacrifice, I feel like this is the easiest thing in order to, um, like do to get the effect I want and the easiest compromise to make. But you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really thrill me, right? So I'm gonna clip into this underside only. And I'm just gonna trim the seam allowance down so that it's ready for the flat felt seam while we, we think about what we wanna do here. I'm actually gonna trim it like this because I, that sleeve felt like it was gonna get in the way. Michael's really liking the shirt so far. All right. There we go. And now we can hem this over like that, right? So what do you think? Do you think like, what could I do with this little raw edge? I could maybe turn under at an angle like that. And I'd get something like, like that, right? I might be able to secure a little bit of these little raw edges, right? I'd have a little bit there. Maybe I could even hem it under. That's an idea. What if I took a little bit bigger of a hem? So let's see here. So if I fold this down, right, and we hem it, <laughs> and then we try and hem this little corner down. No, we don't want that effect. Let's see, maybe if I pull this over I think it's just something we're going to have to either live with. And I, and I plan on stitching and securing it at the top. I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. it. I, yes, the flat fold's on the inside. This time it's on the inside, yes. Um, I don't know if my hand stitches would actually secure that, Donna. You know what I mean? Like it's so thready right there that just hand sewing it would just pull more threads off the edge. Um, and I think like the bar tack idea would be probably the best. And I will have my home machine out today. So we could do that. So it would look like that, right? And then we could bar tack right across. It'd be like this. You could, you, if you could, you could bar tag right on the little fraying edge, right? And so it would be right here. So I think that's a, actually a really good solution because we get that, <laughs> you know? I like this. All right, let's prepare the other one and then we'll iron them both at the same time. This way also, I'm gonna make sure I don't get two right sleeves or two left sleeves. Here we go. There we go, right? Boop, okay. I'm gonna sew with the side up because I'm a little worried about that. Um, seeing this white seam, like that's like right at my seam edge. So there must be a little bit of an angle on this underarm seam here, or not underarm seam, but this sleeve seam. Oh, here's the dot is right there. And it does look like I'm able to skip the 
clip. We have one clip and one clip is enough to deal with right now. Okay, up here I might fudge the seam allowance just to uh, enclose that. It didn't even it didn't even match at the top. Like, what's up with that? What the heck? Uh, what the heck is up with that? Why did the other one? Did the other one just not match at the bottom? Did I like not notice it? No, it does. Um, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, so let's see, so we need to hem this side now. It's right here. Go open up the sleeve there, get it out of the way. I have kind of a short stitch length. I was like, why is it like I'm sewing in molasses? All right, now we're gonna trim this underside. Glue it, hush. What's that um, Liz Taylor expression that ends with diamonds are a girl's best friend? Something is something and something is diamonds are forever. <laughs> Glue is for whatever, sewing is forever. <laughs> Hi Ray, how's it going? I, I'm really not worried about it like unraveling the shirt at all. Like it's just this little cross thing that's not going to go any further. It might fray a little bit and have little threads, but it's not going to like, the sh it's not even part of the structure of the sleeve. It's just this little, little venti thing. So I think, I think it'll be okay. I think it's worth it for the stripe detail. I think that's going to look sharp. You know what I mean, jelly beans? All right, loving that jog at the cap there. Just love that. That just is so amazing. <laughs> that is sarcasm, by the way. Just in case you didn't know. So I think I might trim this down a little bit because I pulled it off the edge a little bit just so that it, um, I wouldn't be in danger of the white showing on the right side, but I would like a consistent width here. So let's just trim this down a little bit right here. There we go. Yeah, I get, I totally get what you mean, Ray. Anything that makes you feel better is 100% a win. Oh, let's make sure this doesn't show. We are close, really close. I still was really close on that white stuff there. So now we're just gonna hem this over the seam allowance, just like a regular flat felt seam. I love doing flat felt seams. Really great for bulky stuff. Here it's just going to be a nice little effect, honestly. All right, so we have it go this way, and we're going to have to clip a little bit right here. I don't want to clip, though. If we do it at an angle, the bias doesn't fray. Just a 
and Nath. Just enough, right? <laughs> I'm cutting it close with the stripe on this one. The other one lines up a little better. <laughs> Louise, the, the wanderer. How do we like this? It's okay. I could have been better about cutting the stripe. We know. <laughs> this was the one. I think this one's going to line up better. I'm not sure I got the opening the same length, though. So. But we'll see. I all of a sudden just thought I had two of the same sleeve. <laughs> Even though we know I was really careful. As Rayanne and I used to say, measure twice, then, you know, measure 12 more times. <laughs> it was more like counting. <laughs> you know, we'd be like, okay, how close are we on, uh, um, I don't know. I can't even come up with an example. Um, webbing, let's, you know, did we cut enough webbing? You know, and it's like, we would count them, be pretty good about the, be, feel pretty confident about that count. <laughs> Get to the sewing part and we were like, how are we short 14, <laughs> you know? We counted those three times, we've learned. Never trust your counting. I'm just, this is that little edge of the selvage that had the, the stitch in it. So I was just trying to get it a little flatter. All right, so this one's gonna look really good, I think. I got this one lined up much better on the cutting side of things. So if this goes under like that, we're gonna need that little diagonal cut again. Just enough to let this turn under here and then turn back this way, like that. I'm just playing. Let's see here. Let's fold this down like this, and like this, and like that. Do we like that? I don't know if we like that. I think we like this. I kind of am liking just the squared off thing to deal with, you know? Exactly, Ray. That's, very, that's a very good way to put it. Going forth, count forth times. <laughs> We were really good at counting though. That's what cracked us up, both of us, you know? <laughs> when you guys count multiple multiples, like say you're like, oh, I gotta count a lot of these things. Um, and you're trying to do it quickly. Do you guys count by twos, threes, or fives, or fours? Like, do you guys do that? Like you go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, like that. And what's your favorite way? Because mine's threes. I love counting by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, you know? And um, she did not She did a different way. And so we couldn't count like that in front of each other. It was really funny. All right, so we're gonna hem this first. Can we just fake it looking straight? Like, let's just cheat here and make it look like I cut it straight, you know? Yeah, we can. It's straighter than I'm giving myself credit for. I just didn't iron it very straight. I think that's better. That's better, okay. 
So I'm just hemming the little tab first. I ran out of bobbin. <laughs> Twos or fives. You count them to 10, make a pile and count. Oh yeah, 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 that's a great way. I like doing that. I do it by 12s. <laughs> There's something about threes I love. Did you guys know that, say you're trying to figure out if a, a number is divisible by threes, that if you add up the digits and they add up to a number that is divisible by three, that it is. So like say the number is 125, one plus two plus five is eight, right? Eight is not divisible by three, so now you know 125 is not divisible by three. That, that has saved me so long. I, I, I learned that when I was really young too, and I thought just everybody knew that. And so I always try and pass it on because it's so cool, especially like in knitting. Knitting's a really good example of why that can be useful. So. Yeah, it's the same thing for me, Barbara. It's a little easier for me. Twos are too slow. <laughs> fives are, are sometimes just too ambitious. Like I can't see five of something as easily as I can see three of something. So if I see five, I'm like, is that four, six, four, five, or six? You know, like the way some things are positioned on the table in front of you, you know? Threes are really, really easy. Okay. All right, so here we are again. Is this, this is the straighter fold, right? Like this, yeah. I'm just um, hemming this in the seam allowance. Sorry, I've got a lot going on here. Just pull this shirt out of the way. So I'm really just on the seam allowance. I'm not affecting the, the shirt at all right now. See, it's just on here. I mean, fives are great because you can make such quick progress. What is this thread right here? Oh, there is just a rogue thread. Okay. Okay. We, you know, <laughs> we're learning here. Okay. Peekaboo. Not my best sewing. <laughs> All right. So now let's hem the placket and we're going to go down to this stitching line right here. Uh, one thing I should mention too is that my thread is heavier on top. So it's going to be bobbin thread that's showing underneath, unfortunately. Why does this feel so tight? It feels really tight. Not tight, but maybe the stitches are just small. Oh my gosh. I just fell off that edge right there. <laughs> Hey Curtis, how's it going? You think you can change, Aisha? You can change from doing twos or fives? Yeah, I get that, Mullen. Yeah, it's so interesting. Like anything works, whatever works, right? <laughs> I think I'm gonna, do, what do you think? I, I, I don't wanna let that slide, but I don't want back stitches right there. That's the cap of the sleeve. Look at how nice that looks. You can change, nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. What do you think of that? Is that just killing some of you? I'm gonna leave that little spot. It'll be fine, it's never gonna come undone. Think about it rationally, right? This is never gonna be a problem. <laughs> Better than having two back stitches there. All right, so let's look at this though. I didn't line up to that very good, so I don't like that. What can we do to fix that? How come I couldn't see that I was gonna do that? Hmm. Now I'm going to take out the whole thing because of that. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> I do not have glue or wonder tape though. <laughs> it's 
sorry. I think I will. I think I might just take out that whole thing. Can I just take this out? I don't think so. Hmm. I'm doing it. Sorry. We're just hanging out sewing together. Right? We're not in a hurry. The people who wanted a tutorial are already really mad that I'm doing this whole sleeve thing anyway. And I'll hear about it. Um, I, I think the main reason is that I would have that white stripe. It's a good question though. Because this one needs to go over this one because it's the under placket. And I'm pretty sure if I do it from the other side, this white stripe would be going down the sleeve. I didn't really like walk through that though, like doing it on the right side. It, well, I did. Oh my gosh, I'm regretting these small stitches, that's for sure. Hmm, maybe it could have been okay, worked. I usually do my flat felt seams on the outside. Sorry, they're really hard to grab because of the linen. Sheesh. I'm trying to get a little thing so I can just pull a little bit, but. You know what I was contemplating yesterday was how strong the tip of a seam ripper is. I think I've broken maybe one in my life with actual seam ripping. I can't see the other one. The other one is right here. I can't see it. That's why I'm doing that. No, I, I don't. I usually pick whatever I want. <laughs> but um, I, th this is a little hard. I would normally switch it, but I can't. <laughs> the YouTube emotes are so funny. Mine are cute. <laughs> Theirs are weird. <laughs> no, I'm just taking apart this little hem, the hemmed edge. Because it didn't line up. And I'm going all the way to top because I'm a weirdo about back stitches. I'll leave, I'll leave an unstitched part of my sleeve, but I won't put a back stitch. I'm just weird about it. <laughs> Maybe there is sometimes. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not like, I don't pick either way. I just pick whatever is easiest in the moment. So. The other side would have been easier because the thread's a little heavier too. It would have been nice to do the flat fields on the right side since I'm using the top stitching thread. But this fabric really loves this top stitch, doesn't it? I love the way the top stitch looks on here. My first seam is right here, so I'm only taking out the second one that we did. I pull and then I regret pulling like that. It makes it harder. It's just better to be calm and do a few stitches at a time. I'm also trying not to grab the fabric because it wants to be grabbed. Hi Sue, how's it going? Welcome to the titillating video of seam ripping. I'm almost done. <laughs> At least we can fix my little open spot. At 
Oh, here it is. This is that's why that just scrunched up. It's going to be a little easy section. See, there's the advantage of that. <laughs> and see, I don't put back stitches, so there's that. That's good. It is absolutely. If I could marry a sewing tool, well, shoot, my awl. I'd have to pick the awl. <laughs> God, the seam ripper. Ooh. Okay. Let's try and line up to this guy right here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Let's try and line this up a little bit. Right there. That's where I need it. Right there. So this seem this hem could have been a little more aggressive here. But we just want that to be right in line with this stitching right here. Okay. Okay, Terry, no problem. Your son's sewing today? Nice. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Ray. I mean, they, they spend a lot of time together. Maybe they'd be fine with it. Maybe I'm the odd man out. <laughs> the odd person out. <laughs> They're like, we don't need her. <laughs> We're fine together. Maybe we should grab the scissors. <laughs> All right, here we are. We're going to come coming down here. So I'm trying to line up with this and it's right here. I'm scared to look. Oh, it's not too bad. I think I can hide this with my other stuff. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay, it's a little better. We'll do better on the other one, right? Let's do this. I'm, am I sewing on this? I am, I knew it, it felt too good. Oh my gosh, you guys. See, this is, um, how our, usually how our sewing starts is that we don't get going until the ceramic gets warmed up. I need to warm up with sewing. You know, it's not a bad idea. Get my sewing legs under me. Shifting the focus from like, you know, coming in, I set up things. I set up the cameras, I check all those, get, you know, get a glass of water, set up Instagram. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh yeah, we're sewing. You know, it's always like that, Christina. Always at the beginning, especially. Plus, sometimes when I'm so careful, I have more mishaps like this. Because I, I feel like I'm being really careful. And then I think, well, you're being careful, so you must be thinking of everything. I saw the sleeve folded there and I was like, that's probably going to be a problem, but I think I'm to the left of it. And it's nice that it's folded and out of my way. <laughs> there we go. 
let's not do it again. That would be classic me. I got rid of all of it, right? All right, here we go. Deep breath. <laughs> Hi, Allison, how's it going? It, that is exactly why, Shem. I always do that to ourselves, don't I? I don't know if I said easy peasy. We just don't have much to sew. That's what I said. I don't think I jinxed myself. Clearly. Oh, we didn't hem this yet. But that's okay. Right? I can still hem that. Shoot, I thought I hemmed that already. All right, we're gonna try it. This is actually a little easier. I can see where I need to go. Right here. I'm not gonna be able to get all the way up, but that'll be okay too. When you're doing, you know, something a little um, unique. You just gotta react to each thing as it goes. That one looks a lot better. Look at that. Okay. Mission accomplished. This one looks pretty darn good. We got the stripe under there. That's a back tack right there. And we're gonna cover that up with a little bit of um, reinforcement here at the top, just so that this vent, you know, cause it's gonna get some stress potentially. So if we back, if we, if we do the back tack right here, I mean the bar tack right here, it's gonna be, I wanna, I wanna know how high that is. Why, for instance, when constructing a collar, do you stop and pivot at the corners and not sew off the fabric, then realign it and continue sewing on one edge? Um, sometimes I've had to do that because I'm compensating for maybe getting one collar and narrower than the other, right? And I need to like fix it. Um, the reason I don't do that though is because when your stitches are continuous, you are, and you trim that corner, your, your stitches are gonna be less likely to come undone and then unravel t through to the corner. And so if I have to do that, like go off one edge and stuff, or maybe my bobbin ran out or whatever and I had to start and stop, I reinforce the corner. Because when you trim around it and you um, turn it right side out, the, oh, that's the other thing is that, and the reason is that, um, let me draw a picture. <laughs> because I think this will make more sense why you don't do that, right? So, so like, if this was your collar, right? Let me make sure I'm actually understanding too what you're meaning, right? So there's our collar, right? And you're, you're saying you wanna do this. So, 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 like that, right? You wanna go off the edge rather than doing it, um, going around the corner, right? So I, the way I do is I go like this and then I turn, right? Yeah, so when you end up trimming your corner right here, right, you're gonna trim those, those threads right off the edge. And so now that little cut thread is really close to your corner. And the stress of turning it, is, it, it, and some fabrics might be okay. Like if you were doing this in like, you know, spoon flower poplin or you know, some sort of tightly woven lawn or poplin or something really tightly woven, you might be okay. Um, but th those threads can come undone and you might cause a problem for yourself. There's really no advantage to doing that. It probably feels like you can get a nice, straight, you know, clean line, but um, the corner's probably gonna be stronger. So that's all, no other uh, reason. 
There could be tailors that do something like that that I just don't know about. Tailoring is a whole nother thing. All right, so here's my pin and I want to stitch across down here. So I think I'm going to do that and then put a bar tack above. I'm going to hope that they're the same on both sides. <laughs> Get rid of this little thread right here. Yeah, so you know, you might just try it, Curtis, and see what you think. Because maybe you can, maybe you can do it and you'll get the result you want. Or maybe you're like, I really want to make this work. Um, how can I make this work? Because I like the result I get. What can I do to strengthen the corner? You know? I still don't like the way this one looks. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take out the back, this, this one right here, this interior one. Ugh, I feel like I'm gonna have regrets, but I, I have, I'm compelled. Remember I'm told you I'm that person that like, if you told me don't press that button and leave the room, I'm pressing the button, I can't help it have to know what's going to happen. So. The problem with back stitching on that point is that you might end up creating a knot of thread. It doesn't seem like a knot, but it will when you turn and try and get the crisp corner. So when I reinforce my corner, you know, if this was my collar corner right here and I had to backstitch, I'm backstitching here. I go do the corner and I backstitch here. Like that's how I reinforce it. You know, like I'm away from the corner. Don't put your backstitch on that corner. It's really hard to turn it and get crisp. I know um, a, and a lot of men's wear sewing, you really like your, your crisp corners. So I'm going to try and hide this little thing right here. I'm actually going to backstitch right here. Okay, this is just waiting for a bar tack now. Well, that was a long time to do a seam. <laughs> Did I make that look appealing to you? <laughs> All right, <laughs> now we're gonna flat fill the proper way our shirt sleeve to our armhole. If you took the um, skill building session on sewing a button up shirt in the guild, this is where the directions diverge from one another when you're sewing a flat felled shirt as opposed to a not flat felled shirt because I really like finishing like doing the underarm, doing the cuff, doing all the whole sleeve and then attaching it to the garment but you can't do that if you plan on flat felling so don't do all that and then go oh wait I can't get my sleeve on there because flat felling a sleeve in the round is just not a great idea. <gasps> you got a threaded nice. That's awesome. This is this one over here. Okay. Oi. I'm getting confused with what's the right side, what's the wrong side. I see this and I think it's the inside, but that's the outside. All right, so here we have, we have this um, wrong sides together. We have this crazy discrepancy in my sleeve cap and it kind of pains me to do this, but we're gonna do it because I'm not sure why it's there. I'm having trouble cutting because I have this thumb thing that's going on with me. All right. Nice, Terry, that's awesome. Ooh, that is like the best kind of feeling, <laughs> triumphing over a machine. This looks crazy peaked for a uh, flat filled seam. It doesn't look like there's, I'm gonna walk it. I just wanna see what's going on here. 
Where does this cut, this guy go here? Hmm, okay. Okay, it's a little bit bigger. That's interesting. Let's see if I can walk it a little better. Oh no, okay, I think we're gonna be good. This is gonna be a tough one. It's a, kind of a set in sleeve. It's got the shape of a set in sleeve, but no easing. So. Nah, my thumb is not better. There is something very wrong with it right now. It just started. I don't know what's going on. I had it x-rayed. Um, they didn't tell me anything about the x-ray, but then I got a referral to... Um, ortho something. <laughs> yeah, wrong sides together. I'm sewing this wrong sides together because we're gonna um, sew it onto the garment on the right side. So I'm also gonna increase my, this stitch line uh, shows by the way. So if you ever look at the inside of your jeans, this is the kind of stitch we're gonna, or the seam we're doing. <clears throat> I think this notch goes here, so I'm going to pin it. I'm kind of curving it like this because of the peak of the cap. I really want it to line up on the seam line, and that makes it a lot easier if I go like this with the fabric, kind of lifting it up, because it lets that the seam curve around the curve of the um, the pattern piece. And then now I don't have any tucks. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping happens, Jan. Nice to see you, Jan. I've been through hand therapy before, but for something different, so. I don't know. I don't know, it just doesn't, it, you can tell it's swollen. You see it right here? Right here. It's, I can barely press right here and like moving it. It's, it's good right now, but it, it's not too bad actually right now. But it goes clunk, clunk like that. And that doesn't hurt to do, but I can't push right here and I can't like open a jar or hold a cup or um, hold scissors. Um, if I were to like, like slip and try and support myself, I can't do that, you know? So I, I don't know what's going on with it. It's really weird. I don't think it's a repetitive motion thing either, unfortunately. That's what I think too, Curtis. Are you a doctor? Yeah. You know, it occurred to me that maybe I did something to it when I was exercising. And so um, I've, I, I was a gymnast when I was a kid. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I think I thought it was arthritis too, but then, you know, she was like, there's no, you know, I don't know. The, they didn't say anything about the x-ray. But um, I was a gymnast as a kid. Like, you know, when you're still growing, I love gymnastics, but I think it's just one of the worst things to do on a growing body. And my wrists ever since then have been kind of bad, right? So Anytime you do things when you're exercising and like they say, okay, we're gonna do burpees or we're gonna do downward dog or anything where I have to, or like plank, um, I can't do that. So sometimes I do this, right? I think that's what happened. Curtis and me, I love it. So I think that's it. It just occurred to me the other day because I was exercising and I was like, oh, I can't kind of do this right now. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe I, I hurt myself and I didn't know it. All right, so here is our seam. Let me get you oriented here. Here's our sleeve, here's our garment. We're gonna trim the garment down. Be really careful. <laughs> I'm gonna put the sleeve side up, but because of this steep cap, the garment's gonna wanna pull toward the seam. So pull, pull that garment under away, right? You don't wanna cut anything right now, like. <laughs> No going back. So we're gonna trim this underseam. I, I like to trim it down to about a quarter of an inch because we're going to hem the sleeve over it. Oh yeah, this cap is so peaked. Be really careful. 
I can't hand write right now either unless I do it at a certain angle and you know, it's not my best handwriting. When I get through these thick things, I'm like, no, I'm cutting the shirt. It's just the yoke. It's just the yoke. It's going to be fine. <laughs> nice, Terry. <laughs> Now, now, you know, he needs you, so, um, and he, and you need to have that thumb, um, and, uh, he needs you to have that thumb, so, uh, no sacrifices. You need to get one of those fake thumbs that massage therapists use for acupressure. Just whip that out occasionally. You have, Jan? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's super sore right here. It's like, funk, funk. My poor little thumb. All right. That looks pretty good. I mean, I know my cutting is pretty bad. It's just going to be bad right now. No one's going to see it. It's going to be inside. Uh, if you're doing a really thick fabric, like, re like thick flannel or something like that, uh, what I like to do at these thick seams here is I'll go like this. I don't need to do it on this, but I kind of trim away Ow. a little bit more and because of that thickness. So she's still a camp. I like that picture you posted of the woman behind backstage um, waiting to go on. She looks so calm. <laughs> I gotta be pacing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do my other one now. It's getting to be a lot of shirt now. Okay, wrong sides together. I'm gonna pin my shoulder seam here. You see how I put it perpendicular because we want it to line up on the seam line down here, right? So, pin that. She's a real pro. Wow. <clears throat> well, I mean, I follow Jan on Instagram. I follow any of you. I can figure out who you are. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I think this is so-and-so, but I can't tell. Unless you're private. I don't, I don't bug you. Don't worry. I won't, I won't follow you if you're private. <laughs> Unless you explicitly tell me to because you want to show me something. My pocket is so close to this seam here. Maybe I shouldn't have made my pocket bigger right the, oh the costumes did look amazing she looked like a natural in that costume did you do her hair and makeup really beautiful work I was thinking of you this morning because I've got my makeup routine down really quick and I was like oh I think Jan would be so proud of me <laughs> I've been favoring the um, the stuff that, oh, what was that stuff called? The pinker stuff that's like, not the, not the tattoo covering stuff, but the other one under my eyes. I really like the little brightener. I, I'm using that right now. And then I stopped using my lipstick as blush because then I found it in my pores. <laughs> Oh, cool, Jan. Well, la ti da. All right. Again, trim the garment side. Brightener, yeah. It's it's a little like heavier than the, the other stuff, but it's a lot easier to get on <laughs> faster.
After this seam, we're gonna do the underarm seam. So I can really make three seams last a long time, can't I? <laughs> All right, so the iron. Look at how close I am. Sheesh. You guys, I don't know. Flafell might not be the thing. This is what I'm talking about. This pattern is so interesting. You don't usually see men's patterns that aren't going to allow for this kind of sewing, you know? It's just a very standard way to sew something like this. Especially like if you did an overcoat or something, you would want those seams to be flat, less bulky. But we're gonna struggle to get by this pocket flap right here. Uh, I think, will I, am I gonna press this right now? I don't know. Usually I just kind of press the first one and then the, um, do the other one on the fly. But I'm a little worried about this cap here. It's very peaked, you know? Um, you know, that's interesting you say that, Amy, because in the instructions, they do have you stitch the pocket down. The, I mean, <laughs> they have you stitch the seam down so say you sew it just like with a straight stitch and zigzag or over overlock to finish it, right? Or you do French seam. They have you do this. They have you press it towards the body and then stitch it down to get it flat. It's kind of like a, a budget way to do a flat seam. Um, you're going to get really close to that then just like I am. So you can, you can stitch down a French seam. The reason people don't, because I feel like that's the next question, why wouldn't everybody just do a French seam and stitch it down? A French seam is bulkier. A flat felled seam is less bulky because you trim away that other side. So. Let's try and, we'll just try and press it like this in the seam allowance. If you can see, someone posted a little picture on Instagram of them watching me. Um, I shared it to my stories, which was kind of cool to see. And uh, this this ironing board cover was so blue on their TV. I didn't recognize it at first. I was like, oh man, that's crazy. In person, this is very grayish, greenish blue. It's a very dusky color, you know. It's got a more fun cover underneath, but we found that a little too distracting for live streams. This is easier, do this. Wrap it around the seam allowance with the um, iron like this, rather than the other way I was just doing. If you're having trouble, if you're not having trouble then. If you're doing a larger size, you might not have as peaked of a cap either. Just depends. Okay. Yes, this one's on the right side. Oh, but wait. Oh, I'm sorry, wait. That's so fascinating. The pocket looks so small when you were cutting and now it's, it's exactly, not specifically on the pattern, just in general. Okay, if you want to French seam your sleeves, should you do them flat too? Um. I don't actually understand that question. You you can't, f I thought, I guess I was misunderstanding it. I was thinking you meant, do you top stitch it to the garment? Do you do it flat? A French seam is a loose seam on the inside. It's sewn to itself. A, f a flat felled seam is sewn to the, flat to the garment.
and a French seam is on the inside. I'll find that little video and put it in the chat. There's a how-to and the sleeve is made up first. Sew the sleeve to the shirt before you do the side seams. Oh, that's what you mean. Ah, okay, okay, that's what we're talking about. Uh, no, I set a seam, I set a sleeve in with a French seam. So I do the side seam of the shirt, I do the underarm of the sleeve, then I put the sleeve on the garment um, using the French seam. Sorry, Amy. Sorry, sorry. I was completely misunderstanding my fault. Uh, I only do this kind of thing where it's flat on a flat feld. Yeah, it is bluish gray, Rachel. Cool, yeah, thank you, okay. Yeah, I explained it in that button up SBS, but I would, don't think I'd want you to have to dig around under to see that. It's probably at the beginning of each of the, that when the, the paths diverge, you know, and it's like, okay, now if you're doing this shirt, if you're doing a French seam, you gotta go to that video. If you're going to flat, flat feld, you go to this video. And you have to do that because you don't, I've had to, I had to flat fell one of my sleeves on that example in that, in that, uh, the, that SBS because I had used the shirt for another example of matching plaids. So I had sewn my underarm and my um, side seam, or I'd sewn my side seam together <laughs> using a flat felt seam. And then I, so I couldn't, I, I could have taken it out, but I didn't, I was like, nah, I'll just flat fell it and set it in. It was a nightmare. <laughs> I didn't do it out on camera. I just did it. I just only showed one and then did the other one later. I know there's macho sewers out there that are like, yeah, but it can be done. Yeah, but at the risk of it not coming out good, why would you do that? <laughs> so... Macho sewers, you gotta watch out for them. Maybe macho isn't the word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Can you French seam a sleeve with the side sleeve option? Side sleeve option. What's side sleeve option? You're not being lazy, Amy. I'm right here. Why not ask? I do have a, a how to French seam a set in sleeve video. It's actually one of my most popular videos. If anyone wants to know how to do a French seam set in sleeve. I might have to trim this down a little bit. My notch right here, it's a little deep. Ugh, this is gonna come out of meh. I'm trying to get better at these though. So I keep practicing, you know. Three drops of oil, my surgery sounds like a brand new machine. Oh. Yep, exactly. Exactly right, Barbara. All right, let's do our best here. Some of some fabrics are a lot easier to do, and some sleeve shapes are a lot easier to do. This one's probably going to be a kind of a double whammy of struggle. But we're here for it, right? This part's going to be easy and make me think, oh, this isn't hard. Here's that uh, <laughs> flap. <laughs> All right, we're still in the easy zone. We're approaching the danger zone. 
Someday I'm going to be so good at this that my seam allowance stays very um, <laughs> consistent the whole time I do these. And I'm not going to be standing in the kitchen looking at my husband's sleeve cap and go, oh, there's a pot spot coming out right now. <laughs> or look at that little point in the fold. Okay, this is going really good. Maybe I reverse jinxed myself in a good way. Oh, the French seems to be, yeah. I'm really glad people like that video and watch it because it just makes me so happy that other people do that kind of seam finish because it, it's a little extra, you know, I understand that. And I used to French seam garments and not French seam the armhole, but now I do. Look at that, that looks pretty, this is probably one of my best ones. I'm shocked. Okay, let's do our other one. Did I just jinx myself? <laughs> See you, Amy. Enjoy your games or whatever you're doing today. Very nice. Yeah, we like it. So you see how this, this is my little, this is one of my little things I like to show. Okay, so see how this edge right here is angling down like this? That means that we don't have it lined up very well, so we need to make sure that's folded flat and then pull it. Line up your raw edges so that it's lined up to the shirt. Yeah, that's a larger size, I'm sure. They didn't grade the pocket. But the weird thing is, if I had used it as is, it would have been really dinky. So I mean, I'm making the smallest size. So um, if anything, it's going to fit on the shirt better on the other sizes but it might be really small on some of those larger sizes. So smashing it down at that heavier seam. I thought I would be um, really utilizing the awl right now. I might have to right now. I'm pulling it apart too so that the seam doesn't blump over on the inside. No one will see it, but you know, you don't want it to pull funny or something. Ah, this is my trouble spot. I should have trimmed that down. This is where that notch was right there. So the notch is also making it lay funny. Okay, I think I, I, think I got it. All right, whew, I don't know how good that's gonna come out, but we'll see. All right. One more seam and our shirt, whoa, is done. That flap just pushed my, oh. Ow. The flap pushed my, my stitching away. Blump. Yeah, definitely. That's just the best way to describe it. I will allow for back stitches there. Yeah, you know what I mean by blump. Like you don't want the um, this little ridge of your your first seam to kind of go whoop like this. This looks pretty good. You can see it trying to blump right here. See that right there? This fabric loves being sewn. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It's like better than like most linens, you know? <laughs> I think it'll be a little wrinkly though. All right, let's try and get this re-sewn here. Keep my foot on the flap here for as long as I can. There we go. We're... All 
That doesn't look too bad for back stitches there. All right, do our underarm seam. Let's cut a couple threads here. All right. Look at the inside of the sleeve with that stripe. It's kind of cool. If you don't know, you don't know. Oh, wow, Allison, you are brave. I've usually done that and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I get so excited to do the under the side seam. I don't know why. I think that's granola. I don't know how that got there, but. All right, so let's do this underarm seam here. We've got a cape right now. Try and get these threads towards the raw edge. We're doing this also wrong sides together. I think what I find most fascinating about sewing is that there are skills and techniques for sure, but there are also so much for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I uh, think the sewing type of like videos and Instagram posts I see are the, the gatekeepy kinds. So I'm like, come on. We've been sewing for, you know, thousands of years. <laughs> You're gonna tell me you think you know best that there's only one way? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm not the best. But this is where you gotta forgive yourself. It's my first time sewing this shirt, first time using this fabric, and it's coming out great. I'm thrilled with how this is looking. I could definitely do a better job, but I don't think I'll be sewing this shirt with this fabric again. So unless I wanted to practice first, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit, right? Awesome, Allison, that's so cool. Yeah, I think that uh, people also get surprised because I'm such a staunch believer in setting in a sleeve until it comes to flat felling. Then I'm like, mm, don't do that. Not to mention that um, the result is so f forced, right? That you end up not even getting a great result. So even though the benefit of having it set in is great. You aren't going to, you're, it's just such a struggle. Like it's no, not enjoyable. I don't even think they do that in the garment industry where they have a, probably a machine that does it, you know? The machine's probably like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh gosh, Christina. <laughs> we are happy to be your company. Yeah, what are you making? Why are you weaving in 5,000 thirds or threads? Oh, I should have thought about like, what side am I on right now? Um, it would probably be better for me to sew, since I have a, a top stitch thread in the needle, I should have done this from the front side of the shirt, not the back just now. I did the other one from the front and this one from the back. Just to keep my top stitch thread, you know, on the side that's gonna show. This will still show, but not quite the same. Or actually it won't, no, it won't show. All right. 
so now we're going to trim the back. So here's my front, see, there's my, my pocket, right? Now we're going to trim the back. <laughs> yeah, you know, a uh, machine does it. That's why, like, say you took apart your favorite jeans. You're like, I'm going to copy my jeans. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to check out how they sewed this. And then you look at the way that the inseam was done. Your machine can't even do that. It's doing, it does something completely different because it's doing it probably in one step with a chain stitch machine. So it does a like crazy folding thing. I've never seen one of those in person, so I don't really know, but I know that it's probably done like that with a machine that does it all at once. We have to do it in two steps. Making three pairs of brassy shorts for my daughter. Oh, cool. Do you, what do you do with your tails? Do you put them like with a tapestry needle and the seam allowance? They cheat exactly, Mom. <laughs> Cheaters. <laughs> Those machines don't know what real work is. <laughs> to hold these in such a weird way right now. Let's see here. All right, so after this is your hem and your buttons and buttonholes and you're done. So if you're needing tutorial stuff, that's it. <laughs> Of a yarn needle and you weave them up and see. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I thought you were doing. All right, let's trim this one. I made some denim shorts yesterday. I'm actually wearing them. And I decided to not clip that spot. I think Shem's mentioned that too. Like someone he follows doesn't clip it. And uh, I didn't clip it and I bound it. And I was like, this is, I might do this from now on. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely, I keep talking about just designing my own zipper fly that I really like, you know? Hi, Michelle, how's it going? Cause I'm tired of this misalignment stuff. Like I, I'm gonna pick my favorite zipper and the, the width I like to sew of the zipper and then design my fly around it My cutting is so bad. I promise it's mostly the thumb issue I have right now. Most, but you also have to do some knotting or something with the cover stitch pocket because I had some trouble. Oh, bummer. <laughs> is your pool like a Monday through, like is it open every day type of thing? Can you tell me more about the pool? <laughs> like this to me is something out of like a movie. Oh, that's cool, Jan. I think I might make a, a shorter version of that video. Something less chatty. <laughs> but still explain everything. I, I wanna know like is the pool, I feel like a lot of story and drama happens at pools in movies. So like, is that the truth? Is that true at yours? Like, do you see the same people and you're like, hmm, I wonder what they're eating today. <laughs> do you, <laughs> I don't know. Do you make up stories for people? Are there people that are always entertaining? Or is it, are you just gonna tell me like, no, it's boring, it's just lifeguards yelling at people. <laughs> That's one of my, I think it's one of my very first tutorials, the fly one. So there's probably faster tutorials out there. They do adult swim for, fi for from 50 the hour. Oh, you found some beautiful hot pink linens. Oh, how fun. Oh, are you doing the dart Barbie thing? Cool. 
Yeah, that's so why I figured it was a, a seasonal thing, but is there like, is it the hub, like the community hub? <laughs> I need to live vicariously. I'm really looking for the iron. <laughs> I love people watching. I've told you guys I grew up um, right next to Disneyland, right? Like on the block next to Disneyland. That's that's where I grew up. <clears throat> and we used to go there a lot, like like you would as a kid that lives next to Disneyland. Like my, my school bus dropped kids off at the motels that, that surround Disneyland because their families owned them. There's those hotels. I, I wonder if they're even there now. But... Um, and so that was kind of cool, you know, and it was very blasé to me as a child. Um, <clears throat> but my friend and I, my best friend, Chris from Minnesota, <laughs> we would go and just people watch. We would just sit on the benches. We wouldn't get on any rides. We would just watch people. It was really, really fun. I've always loved that kind of thing. This fabric is so thready. You painted my nails hot pink? Nice. We, we, over by we, okay, we don't go at the same time. I guess it's a lot of the same people, but in a small town, it's maybe a dozen people there. So it's more, but rarely. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. Unless you want them to be yelling, you know? I, I don't, you can press this right now. I'm, uh, I mean, maybe I will. I, I don't usually, I just do it at the machine, you know? I'll get a nicer finish if I press it now though. So let's do it. This is a seam that shows, right? And I'm, we're pressing it toward the back. That's why we trimmed the back. So the sleeve is gonna be hard. So just suck it up, buttercups. <laughs> but it's not gonna be anything like if you were flat felling the sleeve um, in the armhole, so. Oh yeah, exactly, Curtis. I always thought working in an airport would have been a really cool thing because people are either really happy to be home or they're really happy to see someone or they're happy they're going on a trip. But as I got became an adult, I realized there's also not so much happy stuff. <laughs> and I used to think that also pre 9-11. Now it's stressful. No one meets you at the gate. <laughs> There's social media posting all that. There was never drama on planes until there was social media, man. Oof. My daughter was on a flight uh, recently and she was like, oh man, um, I think my flight's gonna be a viral video. Like I'm sure someone got something on. I, I never got to talk to her about it and find out what happened. <laughs> I was like, no, you were on one of those kinds. She goes, yeah, it was nuts. But, uh, she, it was such a long flight that she couldn't tell us about it at the time. Ours are coming out all the kids from school and stuff, but what is the bit stories all the moms in the thong? <laughs> like hers are pretty chill, but one had to make a save in the dive. Oh. That's so, they're so observant. You are Blair. <laughs> I love that movie. That's my Christmas movie. Love that. It's a comfort one. You're just watching the ending of the the, <laughs> the airport scene. That's a good one, exactly. <laughs> All the cameos on it. Just love it. Well, not cameos. They're actual roles. But um, it's funny seeing, you know, Rick from Walking Dead <laughs> in there. So this is such an interesting uh, sleeve with no tucks for the um, cuff, you know. It's the airport of our dreams, exactly. And a couple of drama flights on one passenger phone, the police and, oh no, the police said, and said they, on one, a passenger phoned the police and said they were being held on the plane. Oh my goodness. I already did the side. I'm reading chat. <laughs> I used to live somewhere where just the flights themselves were drama, not the people, the flights. 
Um, and, you know, we lived so remotely that you, you can, and it's the same way to this day, you can only get in there with the um, puddle jumper planes. And when I first moved there, the, there was no um, flight attendants. The planes were so small, the pilot would turn around and talk to us in his seat. <laughs> and he, he usually would say, all right, you know, the weather's really smooth, blah, blah, blah. You know, there may be a little bit of bumps when we go over Mendocino. And um, as we approach, you know, so buckle up and let's have a safe flight. <laughs> and that was it. Um, the planes got a little bigger or they probably put in safety precautions after 9-11 for that. And um, they're still really tiny, though. But you would, um, if you were in the, if you're in the back seat of the plane you can hear everything in baggage. So all the baby chicks that get flown up there, you can hear thousands of baby chicks <laughs> just cheep, 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 cheep. You can hear over the engine noise. Those engines, those planes are so loud and you can hear the baby chicks. It's hilarious. I used to get my baby chicks that way. And I never lost one in transport. I think one time, and I'd, I've like had thousands shipped to me. It's pretty amazing. But yeah, I only ever have drama because of the plane itself. Like, okay, we can't land. There's too much fog. We're taking you back to San Francisco. And everyone's like, no. <laughs> and then you're like, have to stay the night or rent a car and drive home. That was our drama. Never people. This is tedious sewing today. I apologize. I should have just overlocked, huh? But God, it's gonna be so pretty. It's worth it, right? You're not here for fast. I hope. All right, let's sew this puppy. It's worth it. <laughs> Yeah, Mullen, totally. That is exactly what they do. They would rearrange people on the plane so that it was evenly distributed, or they would um, not allow someone's luggage because they brought too much because the baggage hold would be too heavy or too light, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, exactly, Suzanne. I've seen that too. That is really sad. Oh my gosh, Curtis, right? I just, yeah. All right, here we go. See, it's going smooth, it's really easy. And then we start getting to the sleeve and then we're like, yikes. <laughs> yeah, you guys should, yeah. <laughs> 40 years as a flight attendant. My goodness, that is someone who is committed to their job. I did not get my, I felt like one of my junctures wasn't very good and this is it. I'll bet that's, I wonder why that is actually. Why would that be? Because that's kind of a big difference. All right, so this is the, the suck it up buttercup part. So I'm just going to create a well here where my sleeve is gets sewn. So just make sure you don't, you're just gonna stay in the hole of your sleeve here, right? It's just like gonna pool around you. Pull, distribute, spread apart. So pull, spread apart distribute and so it's not that bad <clears throat> just do a little routine there we're almost there I totally agree Mullen 
I was been trying to do my darts on a um, sloper a couple weeks ago. I just couldn't get them. I was just like, this is, this is me. This is like my body just does not want this dart at all. It, it was terrible. And um, I started like just looking at everybody's darts, right? Like professional garments, professional tailors, things like that. <clears throat> and I just, I started just realizing that it can be a preference, right? Where your dart is. I saw someone say, change your bra. <laughs> I was like, okay, that makes sense. All right, look, we made it. Ooh, get it out of there. Bloop. Nice. Ooh, so good. Yep, Christina, I think mine was too. It was to Washington, D.C. I went with my mom. She went to a nursing convention. <clears throat> And then the following year, I got to go again with school. I like DC. It's really cool. I remember my ear hurting so bad. I have bad ears sometimes. And uh, that was what I didn't like as a child. Let's pull this apart and see if we can get this to line up a little better. Didn't do the greatest job. There, I probably have a cutting discrepancy there. Oh, on a sling seat in the desert duck helicopter. Which are, oh my goodness. That was when you were in the service, right? Yeah. Oh, really, Louise? How interesting. Were you interested in becoming a flight attendant? I mean, yeah, you can do the sleeve like this. It's just being patient. You only need to be able to sew for the, you know, a couple inches, right? And that's why I just, I have to, so I, it looks like I can keep going, right? But I can't because the sleeve starts going under there. So that's why I pull like this, I pull and spread it apart, kind of opening up the, the sleeve itself. And then I pull it this way. It's kind of awesome that I pre-ironed this because um, then I, I'm also not trying to fold this. So yay me for being responsible for once. <laughs> you know, especially because this fabric loves the iron, you know, so it's like, sure, I'll stay like that. The linen. Okay, we're almost there. Don't get um, too eager. <laughs> There's my machine, yay, we're almost there. All right, let's go. Okay, and then, whoop. Cool, we got a shirt. We got a shirt, looks good. Look at my tension looks a little different on this compared to that seam. You think the books were her daughter's and she passed them when I was young. Being a fine was quite glam, yeah. You know, uh, one of the cool things we did when we were in New Zealand was, um, it was, um, was it? Air New Zealand's, it was like an, an a huge anniversary for them, like a, a really huge milestone. And we were at this museum and they had this whole exhibit there just for them. And it was so cool. Like I didn't think it would be that interesting, but they had all the flight attendants outfits throughout the years and who designed the designer that designed them, which was really cool. But the really funny thing was all of um, Air New Zealand's really funny. They're they're like they're very they're they're just a like got a really great personality, and they have the the coolest um, in flight videos. So like meaning like the safety video that they have will have all these cameos. So when Lord Lord of the Rings was a massive massive thing for New Zealand in general. 
And they have this one in-flight thing where it's there's hobbits and there's wizards and there's orcs. You know, they're all just hanging out in there, like amongst the humans. There's elves. Um, and there's lots of those like that. There's, there's a whole pro surfer one that's really cool. And you can play all these... Um, these in-flight videos, and we we took that, you know, we that's how we flew over. So we we and ours was really funny too. So yeah, right, Mom. They are so cute and funny. Oh wow, Louise, that's amazing. All right, so the um, hem was about right here. I think the notch was right about here. It's kind of a big hem. What do you guys think about that? Do we think we want, let's check our pla placket length first. Okay, so we're gonna put the placket together. Yeah, that they are, Suzanne, I know. They, they just have, that whole, everything is just such a great personality. It really comes through. All right, so this one's a little longer, but let's double check it. that stacked right up on top. Well, now they match. I'm gonna trim this off right here though, like that. Um, what kind of hem do I want? Do I want just like that, that? So I feel like that's very jacket-ish. You know? I'm gonna see how long this is. Let's try it on. It probably won't fit me. Oh gosh, why? It kind of does though. That makes me a little nervous. This will probably be too big for Michael if it fits me. Oh yeah, I can't, I couldn't button it though. Boop, boop. So it's a, it's a little long. He's not much taller than me. So, I don't know, maybe I'll just do a, um... oh, okay, Christina, have fun. Stay cool. Ugh. I'm just gonna do a narrow hem. I can always make it shorter for him. Let's get rid of all these little threads here. So I'm just gonna do like a 3 8 3 8 thing. I'm not gonna follow the hem allowance. If you're doing a jacket though, I think a wider hem would look nice and offer a little bit of weight at the bottom to kind of pull the jacket down. Okay. So I'm gonna start right along this edge right here, along the center front. And then I'm gonna turn the corner and go I'm gonna just zoom in a tiny bit. It's a little better, huh? All right. Hmm. Really wish I was hemming this from the other side. I do that so that that little tail of the turned under edge doesn't sneak out the center front, causing mischief, you know, or frayed threads. This should be the easiest shirt hem of your life. There's no curve. <laughs> In fact, if you're someone who always sews with pins, but you'd really like to sew less with pins, this is your chance challenge you to try it on this hem. This is a really good one to practice on. It's perfectly straight. And you know, you can you'd iron it first if you want, <clears throat> but um, try not to. If you have a fabric that's pretty compliant, I would turn it the same amount twice. It makes it a lot easier. It'll need less ironing too. Get this little thread here. <laughs> Let's get that. 
I like these little backstitch tails. I'm just turning this here. I've only sewn one other one, Louise, and it was the Ellsworth. I made two. I made one on camera, and then I made one for me. The other one's at Hearts right now. Um, but yeah, the Ellsworth. I made one out of a window pane linen for me. I love it. It's not a typical Cerami garment that I would wear usually. usually. So, oops, I just pulled that the wrong way. I was just checking my placket. I'd like to sew more of those. I, there's, I feel like they expanded their sizing because just to be really transparent, I just hadn't, I love their stuff, but um, I'm pretty sure their sizing was a little limited for a bit there. I may be wrong. I'm pretty sure that was the reason why I hadn't. Their patterns are a little on the high side. Maybe that's a because of the um, exchange. But you could use the hearts coupon if you're in the states here to save a little bit on it on any of theirs. They 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 just started carrying them. Cool. There we go. No, that is Grain Line Studio, Suzanne. I've sewn many of those. <laughs> I love that one. It's funny, it, it doesn't fit me that great, but I still love that pattern. I love the idea of it too. Oh, cool, well, right, well, oh, cuffs. Oh my gosh, we have cuffs. We have, cu we have some fun stuff still to do, meaning hard. <laughs> or what people think is hard. All right, so um, I'm gonna do this the same way I do my collar stands. I'm gonna sew it to the inside first, all right? This is a one-piece cuff. So I'm gonna put the uninterfaced edge. Uh, I'm gonna hang it, the seam allowance off right now. I'm just gonna check and see if that's gonna be, if it's gonna fit. I always check. I never, I feel like cuff patterns are the one thing nobody gets right, and they're always off. This one looks great. <laughs> So I always check cuffs. All right, so we're gonna sew this. So like I said, I'm doing this, um, the inner cuff to the inner sleeve. This is a huge seam allowance. This is another thing I like using small seam allowances for. Try and do the same seam allowance when you start and stop because now we're going to check that our plackets line up, right? Because you don't want your cuff to not line up. Yeah, that exactly, Louise. I think that's another reason I haven't really is because that aesthetic just, it's just not my thing. I love, I love the way it looks. I love it on other people. On me, it looks like maternity. So see how we're, I'm putting this nice and flat and you can see how my stitching is off from one to the other. So we need to fix that. Now, it looks to me like this whole side is a little longer, see? So in the case of that, I can actually just increase my seam allowance. Ooh, no, I can't really. We don't want to change our cuff width. So let me just, um, I have a whole video on sewing cuffs to shirts, so if you need something. So the thing um, you don't want to do is just sew this so that it matches, right? Because now what you've done is made this cuff narrower than that side, right? So right now I'm holding up the cuff to each other to make sure that that is, would be the case if I did that. So see, look, those match perfect. So I actually have to take out my stitching and then pull the sleeve, um, make the sleeve a little bigger. So it's got, you got to do this. Otherwise your cuff's going to be narrow and then they won't match up and you've just did all that trying to fix 
it for no reason at all. So see you later. Have a good weekend. Oh, that's so cool, Louise, they did. That's how, how good for them. Yeah, it is. It's the um, exactly little girl playing in the cupboard shapeless. Yeah. It's kind of pajama-y, like old-fashioned pajama-y. <laughs> little House in the Prairie pajamas. <laughs> So hopefully that makes sense why I have to remove this a little bit because we don't need to adjust the cuff. We need to adjust the sleeve. So let's get rid of this and I'll just taper it. So I'm going to use the same seam line on the, the cuff, but we're going to move it down a little bit like that. And what we can do is check it. Right there. So where the pin is, that lines up with that stitching over there. That'll work, great. So now let's just blend it in here. Him and him for the very tall, yeah. Very tall and um, not too well endowed sometimes, <laughs> bust wise. There's been a lot of pattern releases lately. I'm looking forward to pattern chatter, it might be chonky. All right. So how about this? How do I make you guys a deal? This, I'm gonna let you decide. I can just sew one cuff and then do buttons and buttonholes. I'll do some, I won't do all of them. Or I could do both cuffs and not do buttons and buttonholes. If you guys don't have a preference, I probably would just do both cuffs and mark my buttons and buttonholes. All right, so now, well, the seam allowance is massive, man. All right, so now we're gonna put those cuff right sides together. Both cuffs, hi Anthony, how's it going? Nice seeing you. Oh, it's a cuff crowd. Oh, Sue says one cuff, okay. All right, so now we're gonna put the cuff right sides together. This one has a decorative notch right here, right? Um, personally, I do not turn this up when I sew this. It just can cause you more issues. You, you're gonna get to turn it up no matter what. And I'm gonna show you a little cool trick why this leaving this untucked make, gives you another good opportunity, all right? All right, so we're gonna, I'm like trying to figure this out. We're gonna sew this. This is kind of weird, you know, here's my little angle, right? So we're parallel to it. When do I turn? I'm gonna turn when I get to this right here. Uh, this isn't the right seam allowance over here, so I'm hoping I don't get a different angle on the side. Okay, so let's put this one right sides together. straight up along your sleeve. <laughs> this feels really weird. I, I, uh, I don't think I got the angles the same. Let's check. Okay, those, I'm shocked. Those are almost identical. I don't know how that happened. I'll take it, but it, it probably shouldn't have worked. I'm gonna trim it down a little bit through here. 
Don't trim down here. I mean, you can trim a tiny bit. Don't trim at all. Trust me, it causes problems. One and a half cups and <laughs> four buttons. Hi, Marilyn. How's it going? No, my, my industrial does not do buttonholes. It doesn't do a zigzag. It's just straight stitch. That's it. All right, so now we're turning the cuff right side out. Poking out those little angles there. Like that. All right, and so now we're gonna turn our sleeve the other way. So that it's right side out. It's just easier for me because I don't have a free arm to do it that way. Oh no, I do want it inside out. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, Malin. <laughs> All right, so let's go press this. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. So when you turn this under like this, the key is if you had done this, if you had sewn it like this, right? Okay, so say you sewed your cuff like that, like you think I know better than Sarah me. I'm gonna do it that way. Fine, do it that way. But here's the problem with this. When you go to turn it right side out, what happens is you have this little piece right here that slips down, right? No matter how well you sew it, it's just kind of a problem sometimes. So if you leave it unsewn, what happens is I like to pull the cuff open like this, right? And I pull the seam allowance of that of this end seam here toward the cuff. And now I wrap that around that. It kind of naturally wants to do that. I wrap that around that and then I just put it back, right? And so that seam allowance is enclosed there. And now you only have this folded edge here hanging down, which is looks nice, right? So, it right, Curtis? I know, we've been doing good today. I created my own drama, that was it. <laughs> All right, so that's what I like to do. And um, I'm just deciding if I want to iron or not, but I kinda do, I kinda do. So let's just go, well, maybe we should attach one cuff and then we can iron both at the same time. T attach the other cuff, okay. Okay, so again, this is the right side of my shirt out. So we're gonna put the inner cuff to the inner sleeve, hang it off the seam allowance. Let's actually check our vent first this time. Make sure they line up because that's what was wrong with my other one. And they, they pretty much do, right? I have a little bit of this one hanging off, but I can see it hanging under. So now we have our vent works really good. Let's just straighten that up a little bit. And now it's all down to us using the same seam allowance at the beginning and the end. So inner cuff to inner sleeve. Full seam allowance, which is five eighths in this case. Pretty sure they want you to do that. cuff probably, like this fabric probably could have benefited from being completely interfaced. All right, I'm gonna check my, my seam allowance and see how, how accurate I was. This one looks a little bigger. So now let's check our placket again. I know it seems kind of uh, over the top, but um, the problem if, is if you don't, your your cuff won't line up and it, it, it's gonna look bad. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way, it just looks bad. So that, that's doable. I don't really like this heavy back stitch there. I, mean, I was doing this uh, little experiment where I was trying to start my back tack like here and then back up to there and then go forward. That way I had no back tack 
at the ends of my um, seams like this. But I, I forgot, you know, it takes so many times doing something to create a new habit. So, all right, so now we're gonna put the sleeve right sides together. Let's see if I can get this angle right on this one. I'm gonna do it this seam allowance that I have hanging off there. I pivot at the bottom of the angle there and then go straight down like that. And then let's do this side, right sides together. And then I'm gonna check, because I don't believe if I got it the same. It's pretty good. It's like a half a stitch different. Maybe when we turn it, the turn of cloth will help me. <laughs> Maybe it'll make it worse. We'll see. Let's check it out. I'm gonna trim these. We're gonna turn. And now let's iron a little bit. Okay. All right. So first I'm just gonna iron along that interfaced edge there, just the fold line of the cuff. The, I have a instructional video, I think I said that, on putting a cuff on, and, but what I wanted to say was, I have two videos, one for putting on a shirt sleeve placket that just has a bias opening, and one that has the tower column, you know, the whole thing, and in both I sew the cuff, um, and I give you this little, little instructional that I'm doing here. I don't have any with the vent like this, but this would be the, like sewing a bias placket, this cuff. And so now what I'm gonna do is, um, well, let's, let's, let's iron this little edge right here. Let's see, how, how does it look? How does it look when we fold it over? It's doable, okay. So now the next thing I do is we're gonna pin along this. I might do this at the other machine actually. Yeah, we'll do that at the other machine. So let's just iron our other one and we'll do all the pinning under the better camera so it's closer up. My sleeve is better. I think I need to figure if I stretch the arms eye or if I eased in weirdly. It's kind of fluffy. Well, fluffy might be good. Might give you more ease. I'm trying to help Eliza with her um, Cielo top. Still. All right. Okay. So, what I like to do when I do this next step of pinning is I pin parallel to this edge. This is really important on these kinds of sleeves that don't have a seam right here because it's really easy to pull a little too much and over rotate your cuff. So what you're looking at here is the right side of the sleeve. If the sleeve is inside out right now, this is what's gonna show. And so now I'm gonna, wow, the seam allowance is massive. Let's put our pins a little closer to the fold edge. I don't have room for my seam allowance. <laughs> like this, okay. So it's nice and flat, right? Keep it nice and flat because you want to pin, you want to fold this perpendicular. You don't want to torque it at all. 
and put that fold just past that stitch line. Slaves. <laughs> and then remember how I told you to wrap that seam allowance around. It, it happens kind of naturally if you sewed it in the way I did. See it in there like this? And now I really place where I want it to be. So I push it in there, I open it up, I lay it back down. Tell it what you want it to do. If it's not doing what you want it to do, do something counterintuitive. Like sometimes pulling harder, it makes it worse. Loosen it up a little bit or something. It, it, it's like that with all things with sewing. So here's the other side, right? That's just naturally how it is. Poke it in there, open it up a little bit, place it down. I sometimes fold it too much so then now I can take my awl and kind of just pull it out gently like what I want, you know. Just past the stitching. And then we'll do the rest of the sleeve. I did my seam, I did my two opening or like the ends there. And now I'm going to flatten this out best I can. If your sleeve's bigger, you might have a little more room to work with. <clears throat> Gosh, this seam allowance is huge. All right, so I can't see from this angle. I think I folded it not quite enough. So right now we're going for our cuffs being equal width across the whole length of the cuff. This doesn't look to me like this looks wider down here than this. I'm not sure if that's just the way the, there might be a curve in the sleeve. That wouldn't change the cuff width though. So let's pull this out a little bit. Try and compensate for that visually. And then look at it. This could be right through here. What I think this is, was that it didn't get ironed right. We can pull this down a little bit and then let out some of this. that help? Maybe. Now we're going to stitch this from the right side so we don't have to worry about catching the underside because we already sewed it. Right? So there we go. So um, when I go to start sewing this, I always start at the underarm seam right here, which is this right here. And then this way we can make a trip all the way around the cuff in one continuous stitch. I didn't need to back stitch at first, I could do it at the end. All right, and now we're ready to go. And remember, this is the right side of your cuff. So another little trick, it's not gonna happen on this because this fabric's so lightweight but right here, especially if you're doing really thick cuffs, what can happen is that this top layer is going to slide, right? Your presser foot's gonna press it so that what happens is you'll, you'll get this kind of effect, right? And you don't want that, right? You want it to land in line. You don't want this top layer to slide towards you. So what I sometimes do is I use my awl and I push it toward this, the machine, the needle, and you see how it's picking up this edge right here? I kind of over rotate it. And then that way, when the presser foot is sewing toward me, it compensates for that. And it's nice and flat. Now, I don't think I nailed it on the underside just now. Um, mainly because I'm trying to do a few things at once, but, um, we don't really 
need to worry about it because we know the underside is sewn, right? So we're gonna go all the way around. And get rid of that pin. All right, now come down here. See, like that fold is, it's like past my stitch line. So when I go right here, it might end up in the ditch. That's what I think is going to happen. All right, my whole sleeve is, <laughs> my whole shirt has to move over here. All right. Now we just need to finish at our underarm. Straighten it all out, make it nice and flat. Think of it as like you're folding paper and you would like that all to be nice and flat. And then see so you have your back stitch at the underarm where nobody will see it. This is the inside, so mostly it landed in the ditch. If you really want your cuff to look like this on the inside and the outside, just practice. I can do it when I'm a little bit more attentive. So it's, it, it, you really can get it just the same on top and bottom. It's easier to at least flub it on the inside than the outside, right? So this is our right side. Let's see how it looks. There we go. And there's our little pop. Nice. Okay, let's do our other one. Love, I love sewing things like this. <laughs> it makes me so happy. All right. Um, again, I'm going to pin this close to the edge here so that when I'm pulling on it, I don't pull it too far. You know, you don't want your inner cuff to be narrower than your outer cuff or vice versa. All right, and so then now I'm going to pin this first one right here. Let the underarm seam make it nice and perpendicular to it, right? You guys are so quiet. <laughs> I just was like, wait, am I alive still? <laughs> I've done this many, many times for you guys, so I don't feel like you're really paying attention to this, right? <laughs> When you get quiet, I get more instructive. <laughs> I gotta fill the, the, the silence. All right, so here's the um, thing here. Yeah, it's coming out nice, Julie. I'm, I'm liking it too. Okay, so we'll fold this. Oh, I don't like that. You see, see this like little fluff of thread here? get rid of some of it. You really can't go wrong with chambray ever. I mean, I, I, I don't know anyone who just doesn't like it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've, you know, I've grown, grown up in California. I've only lived in California and Colorado. The whole Western thing not really my jam, I, you know, I'm nothing like against it. It's just not my thing, right? I would feel like I was a, a poser if I were wearing cowgirl shirts and stuff, right? <laughs> um, it's a menswear pattern, Marilyn. If you want a, a women's button down shirt that's similar there's a, there's a lot out there. You could fit it to you if you wanted. I tried it on earlier. Uh, this is for my husband. He's much smaller than me. Well, and he doesn't have quite the boobs that I do. <laughs> so it doesn't really fit me. It hung nice though. I'll try it on in a minute again for you if you like. But um, it's funny. I've been watching like more and more like Western-ish stuff. So I feel like it's taking me a long time to be kind of open to more Western stuff. My stepdad's really into it too. So 
it's been around me. I've been to like all the famous ghost towns and stuff, you know. So, you know. But um, I've been watching a, a Western like murder mystery type of show based on books. And I'm getting more and more into it. Like I keep picturing this in like brown corduroy, you know. So, poser. <laughs> Uh-oh. No. <laughs> Maybe it was the sloper from when you were 15. <laughs> but this is, I, I kind of, I'm like liking some of the Western details. I think chambray kind of makes me think of that a little bit. Since chambray is kind of like a lightweight denim sometimes. I sometimes feel betrayed when I start liking something that I never liked before. I feel a little bit like, what would my past self think of me? Would they think that's not who we are? Or is it because I'm more open-minded? Is there something about it that I finally understand? It's interesting. Okay. It's looking good. All right, starting at the underarm seam again. Don't start at the, don't start down here. Don't start down here. If you have to take this out, it won't look good. Just leave it alone. That's something I figured out a long time ago. I was like, oh, my cuff is, is narrower on one side. Now I have to take it out because this is a gift. And then I would be trying to take out my back tack right there. And some fabrics, man, they do not like being, you know, being seam ripped, right? And then you have a tear and then the fabric's tired and then you just can't make it look good. So just put your back tack somewhere else so that you, you're giving yourself some grace on that, you know? So, taste change, I've grown, yeah, maybe. Well, there's definitely something about like, I don't know. I, I think I'm, what I'm doing is extrapolating Western stuff from Western history, right? I'm looking at it more of like a, um, a um, functional element, right? So there's reasons you wear like a loose shirt in when it's hot or you would wear other things if you were riding horses. Those are very functional elements. I don't have to associate them with things I don't, not, I'm not really that proud of, you know? Okay, we're at the beginning. Wasn't it cute when I thought my shirt was done and it didn't have cuffs? <laughs> so cute. The sleeves all twisted up there. This is the underside. This one landed more on the cuff. Huh. This fabric is pretty seamless looking. You know, it's, it's very forgiving that way. It's making me look better than I did. See the seam, it just really blends in with itself. So I'm, you can see my stitching. It's right on the seam practically. All right. Let me try it on again. Well, there's a pin there. This is kind of a fun element, right? The stripe on the inside. <laughs> Let's leave that there. The sleeves only got longer. The co collar's kind of big. Not my size, not made for women. This is as far as it goes. <laughs> How, it hangs really nice though. Like it feels like it hangs really nice. Like it feels really good. I have to say, like if this had more circumference, 
it would feel really good. I'm trying to give you a whole shot. There's my hip tilt. <laughs> so yeah. And then, you know, the cuff goes back over front or back uh, front over back. Definite shacket vibes. I agree. You love what we missed where the salvage came off. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me not to want to make this as a shacket. Okay. Let's just give it a once over. Let's see if we can clean up anything. This little loop I get sometimes with my under stitch. Yeah, I think George was hanging out in our yard yesterday. We have two deer now that are coming all the time and um, hanging out. But one was there for like a long time yesterday with a much bigger like rack on his head than the other one. So I wonder if that was George. It's cool, he still comes back. It's really hot, he always comes. Yeah, so there's the little selvage loop. We got the selvage here, got the loop in the back. This is where we started and stopped our collar. So it needs buttons and buttonholes, but what do you guys think of this massive placket? <laughs> Sure it is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true, Curtis. Sydney became Shidney yesterday. You might be sure it is. <laughs> oh man. Um see I just think these buttons are gonna look really small on here. The placket kind of swallows them up. What if I put um Two rows of stitching on the placket. Right, Mullen? I know. What if I put another row of stitching? Let's do this. <laughs> oh, my bobbin never wound. Okay. We're gonna pretend, we're gonna, we're gonna mock up some top stitching. How do I not have? Another spool open. All right. <laughs> we'll go to any lengths. Okay. Okay. All right. So here we have. This collar doesn't have a very distinct roll line. You're gonna have to break it in because the collar stand is just like a little uh, small thing here. All right, so what if we put another row of top stitching? <laughs> oh, I, I love snaps. I do have snaps that are larger than these. My only hesitation is that Hearts gave me this project. They'd pro they're so easy to work with though. I don't know. It almost makes it look bigger. Why is this placket so huge? <laughs> Malin, that's funny. I like that. I am mostly Swedish after all. <laughs> what size do they suggest in the pattern? Three quarter inch buttons. Exactly, Anthony. This is what I said the other day is that women's wear 
women will accept a much larger button. Men aren't as keen on big old buttons. Hmm. So, I don't know. I wish you could see how, how much, what it really looks like in person because I know the camera doesn't really like the texture of this fabric. Let me try and soften that a little bit. I don't have the, oh, I do have the sharpeners set. Okay, let's do that. Okay, um, let me go get my snaps. I think they're a little too heavy duty to be honest. But I have maybe in here, maybe these. These aren't very big though. We're getting it all out. What do we got? Okay. I, I just think these are a little too heavy duty. No, these are like three eighths, seven sixteenths. Yeah, they're like between three eighths and a half inch. Oh, that's a good idea, Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn might have a really good idea here. Let's see. We did that. <laughs> I'm clearly invested in snaps right now. <laughs> Something like that could work. I might have to get Michael's opinion and see what he thinks. All right, so I have pearl snaps. I get so excited. <gasps> pearl snaps. Okay. I don't think he'd like that though. It would look so good. I don't think you'd like that though. Pearl snaps. Okay, let's let's look at my other snaps. These are all uh, cap snaps. So I have white. I have lots of pearl. Um, I have black though. Okay, lastly, these I think are just to, oh wait, let's see what we have in here. Um, I don't have any enough of these or these. All right, this is just my hardware basically. I might, Mullen, I might. Okay, so I'll check this and then I'll go get my button thing out. What about silver snaps? This actually looks really good. The black are pretty good, I know. I kept picturing this shirt with black buttons and I realized why that was. And it's because one time I sewed the Mella Low for hearts and they, they gave me chambray with black buttons and it looks really good, but it's not my shirt. I sent that to them. <laughs> yeah, silver's pretty nice, okay. These are, these are, these are, they're not much bigger than these. Isn't that funny? I like the silver too. 
Okay. I think that there's nothing big enough in here. Why, why do they look bigger? They're slightly bigger. I think it's just because it's more, because it's it's not black. <laughs> there he is. Black is number one, silver is number two, and pearl doesn't rank. Sorry. <laughs> He's watching. Hey, babe. Black is number one. You want black snaps? You're okay with snaps then? Hubby has spoken. Um, I have big, bigger buttons too. These are gray black. This could work. Kind of a tortoise shell, but black and gray. This actually looks really nice. Hope I have enough. Sure, uh, meaning these. Um, okay, that's about, that's probably all I have. <laughs> How about these? <laughs> These are what he picked out for the very first shirt I made him. <laughs> um, okay. None of these others will work. All right, so we've got it down to black snaps. These right here are almost five eighths, Anthony. So they're close to what they recommend recommend. Curtis likes the black and gray. Okay, Michael, do you like these bigger black and gray ones? Or do you like black snaps? I have larger black snaps, but I, I don't really think you, why did I put these in here? I don't, really think you need to go bigger. Like these are really big. <laughs> Is he still there? Oh yeah, do you like two rows um, of top stitching or do you want a single row? Okay, that's your question. I think the buttons look best. I do too actually. All right, do you want two rows of top stitching here and here? It's a really chunky placket. that away, you away, you away. Oh, who asked about the snaps? Um, up to me, okay, thanks. Thanks for the input, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, were you, who, who was that? Was that, were you asking about these? Oh, um, I got these from WayWAC. It's the spring snap assortment tray. You have to have your own hardware or get their snap setter tool, which is kind of an investment. Um, and then the pearl snaps were from them as well. These are a ring snap style, prong, prong snap style. So it's got the little like, um, see the prongs back there? And I use this purple tool to put them on. It's over there if you want. It's I've used the purple tool that goes with these things, the, the snap source. It's like, like the shape of an um, eye. So I can show it to you if you if that's the one you're interested in. Whatever you get snap wise, whoever you guys buy snaps from, get the tool. Don't try and think you don't need it. <laughs> get the tool. Okay. You know where I got these gray black buttons from? This was in the, um, yeah, sure, Allison. Remember when Cashmerette sold the Auburn blazer kit with all the jacket making? I didn't get the fabric from him, but I got all the other things like the interfacing and the everything. These were the buttons that came with it. I didn't use these buttons. All right, so let me put back these. 
I hope Hearts is fine with this, but I think they understand. The greater good, right? I'm just gonna mark my buttons. I have a whole um, buttons and buttonholes skill building session. If you guys are interested, it is detailed. Very detailed. Where's my, oh, my Majiggy. Who is with all this stuff over here? This thing. So I'm gonna put this under the machine like this. So I have the whole placket here in front of me. Let's hope we have enough buttons. We do, we definitely have enough buttons, but the flaps aren't getting buttons. <laughs> So we put the first one up here and the last one here, we're missing a button. So we'll do a little bigger spacing. Hmm, kind of want one more. I do use it. Night Louise, nice seeing you. Do you know about the guild? Oh, um, I think Allison knows. I think Allison's in the guild. I, I've heard other people have problems with these, but mine is pretty solid. Like I wouldn't get an off-brand one because you don't want it to be non-consistent, you know, between your things. This is as far as it goes though, what I have here. And I'm feeling a little like I might need more spacing than this to get down to there. And so then this is how I will calculate it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So I count the number of spaces in between and then I measure how long, um, oh, here we go. I measure where I want that last one to be. I'm gonna say like right there. So 19 inches. I need to divide that by five. Night Mullen, nice seeing you. Have a good weekend. It doesn't feel stable to you. I don't know where I got mine. I feel like I got it on Amazon. I have one linked to Amazon as an affiliate link on my website, but I'm pretty sure that's where I got it, but I could have gotten it locally at a store. Is he, ah, oh, Terry, nice. He is now initiated. The hazing is done. <laughs> no more thumbs in the way of rotary cutters. He's paid his dues. <laughs> All right, here we go. 19 divided by five. So my space in between needs to be 3.8 inches. And so that's what we'll do. Yours is off. Yours is off. Yeah, I, oh, I doubt this is perfect <laughs> for sure. Okay, I'm gonna put my first one right here. I would like something to weigh down my, <laughs> since I'm not at my table, 3.8 is gonna be just past three and three quarters. So we're gonna go between three and three quarters and three and seven eighths. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. We'll do the, the tape measure the whole way. I'm just gonna put a line across. One, two, three, four, five. All right. 
get my button cup out. This is Haku. <laughs> Gotta make friends with that steam ripper. That was the uh, thing I actually, when I taught sewing to, um, in a high school, I always did all their seam ripping for them. There were some that were like, no. And I was like, okay, fine, you know, I'm fine. I don't have to seam rip your stuff. But that was like the free service I provided. I'd be like, let me take it apart. I, Cause I wanted, I also didn't want them to get frustrated and be like, ah, you know, and like rip it or something. And, um, or just not, or just be kind of disheartened. I'm like, that's okay, I got it, you know? And I would just undo it. There were some people that if they didn't listen to what I would say, I'd be like, all right, you get to take this one out, you know? But that, that was about it. Usually most people listen to me. All right, so now I'm going to mark my button length. I, usually what I do is I just mark the actual width of the button like that. And then the, I put my button, like the ends of each of my button on either side of the line. And then that way I get the space I need for the width. If you have a really thick button though, I like to go like this. I take the button like this, you know, here I'll mark this one like this. And then I would lift it up and then mark the end right there. And that gives you the thickness plus the length of it. So on a really thick button, it's easier to do that too. It's harder to do on something thin like this. It's nice it's sticking to my finger. It's really convenient. To place buttons. Wait, what? That's true, Ray. It is a skill. All right, so our placket measures, oh, it's more than one and a half inches wide. It's like one and five eighths. Sheesh. So now I'm gonna mark down the center. So it's a little over three quarters. I usually use my machine as the guide for centering the button, though. I line up the placket to something on my machine, so. Oh, geez. No, I can't lose any. All right, well, I'll find it in a bit. All right, that's usually how I do this. You know what I don't have? Oh, my mom would fold a strip of adding machine paper. Oh yeah, what is that for? Oh, is that, oh, for button placement. I've done that too. When I've been really confused on like um, how to get it, it wasn't until I realized I don't need to know the, the space, I need to know the spacing. So I need to know the number of spaces between the buttons, the overall length and divide it by that. That's when I finally figured it out, right? but I would do the same thing with paper. If you have an even number of buttons, you can just fold your paper in half. And then, well, if you have, a, it's actually better if you have an odd number of buttons because you fold the paper in half and then fold each section in half. <laughs> That's smart. Um, I don't have buttons for the cuffs though. We need a button for the cuff, but you know, I can use, I'm gonna use a smaller button for the cuff and I have gray and I have black. So we'll use the button box. I'll mark my cuffs for you guys. Let me go find a button. No, I got, I'll get the box. I don't think any of them are tortoise shell. We just need two. Maybe we can find some orphans.
This is from that. So we could just do two. Right? For the cuff. I think that could work. Let me make sure they're the biggest ones in here. These are different sizes. This is also from Waywack. It's just this little sport shirt button thing. This thing has been great. My only thing is that I would like it to just be one size button and not the um, smaller ones. I just want all the biggest ones that are in here. Because there's three sizes in here. I'm making sure I got the biggest ones. <laughs> I don't like sewing these really small buttons. You get two of the black, so that's why I'm using both these little things here. Yeah, we'll do. Those look the same, don't they? Okay, we'll do two of these. I think that'll work. How about the black snaps? Um, do you mean for the whole thing? Would you rather have them all match, Michael? Like, do black snaps in here too? Or do you just mean on the um, cuffs? Because we could do that. <laughs> for the cuffs, just the snaps? Yeah, we can do that. This is so much better when you're here telling me what you like. He's definitely got fashion sense. Probably not appreciated much in our parts though. I'm pretty sure these came from here, yeah. I put the snaps over there though. Let's get two. I mean, he's got, you know, me at, you know, I'll make whatever he wants. So he can, he could design whatever he wants and I'll do it. All right, so these for the cuffs, these for the buttons. They'll look good. I like these. I like the black on here a lot. All right. So let's measure the width of our cuff. It's like two inches. And if I did this. Usually I put it about a quarter of an inch from the edge, but with the snap, I'm not going to be able to do that. It's going to be something like that. So let's put that half inch in, especially with this angle. <laughs> don't call you a designer. That is an inside joke. You don't live with someone who is a designer that um, we're, we've worked together and the same company before. And he was in sales, he was a sales director, and I was in the design department. And my, that was always our complaint as designers, is that everybody's a designer. Like they all come in here and they're like, just do this. And we're like, that's not possible. <laughs> so he would hear me complain about that. <laughs> it's not technically an insult. And then above the door as you left, it said, it'll fit somebody, <laughs> which was also an inside joke. All right, that looks good. 
So um, I'm gonna center the snap on the cuff this way. Because of this little angle here, it changes how I usually position things. If I didn't have the angle, like the cuff was squared, I like to bias my closure just a tiny bit down, like right here, a little off center. And the reason I like to do that is so that the cuff doesn't flare when um, it's snapped. It doesn't look, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, Michael knows. Oh, the design meetings, I'd be like, no, not a meeting. Just tell me what you want. I don't wanna sit there and listen. It was terrible. I'm not a meetings person. He is, he's good. See you, Anthony, have a good weekend. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're ready. I'm gonna do these off camera since it's already two o'clock and I need to eat lunch, so. That's looking good though, let's look at it. The last thing I'm ever gonna drop in my shop is that snap tray or the button tray. This is what I was telling you about, Michael, the little stripe in the placket. that goes all the way up the sleeve on the inside. Oh, I also need to remember to do bar tacks. So here's our sleeve, here's our cuff. I don't get to surprise them this time. We've got our selvage right here, little peak. We've got a little in the collar stand and a little loop back here. This was inspired by Terry. That's where she likes to put hers. Yeah, it looks good. It's, it's really interesting. It doesn't have a shirt tail hem, it's straight. So. This thread color does not look like that thread color. I'm a little worried about it. Oh well. Thanks Suzanne. Yeah, I'm happy with this. This was a, this fabric was so nice to sew. And um, this was a really fun pattern. We got to do some really fun stuff with it. So thanks for coming, you guys. The, the pockets are pretty big. I feel like Michael's gonna be like, take the flap off. <laughs> I'm leaving them unsnapped and stuff though. Maybe I would do that, I don't know. Anyway, all right, Mikey likes it, nice, <laughs> I'm glad. Well, hopefully I'll be able to finish this today and I'll show you guys pictures of it on him. Um, so this is the Merchant and Mills Arbor shirt. And um, thanks to Hearts Fabric for giving us this great project. So, and thanks for coming, you guys. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks for all your input too. You guys really helped me decide on some things. I'm I think I'll definitely make this again. I think, I, I think my brother would really like this shirt a lot. Like the straight hem and everything. I might even buy this pattern so I can make it for him and his size because I cut off all the sizes to make this one. <laughs> so. I might just do that because I think he'll really, he would really like this. I think he'd wear the heck out of it. So yeah, you're welcome guys. Thanks for coming. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. I'm going to be making some polar fleece garments in August. I'm also going to be making a halter top really soon by Oliver and S company. Who's Oliver and S again? Uh, oh, what's the company that she, oh, Liesel, Liesel and Company, right? Is Oliver and S, right? I'm gonna make the halter and I might do that in between live stream things. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is a Maison de Fauve pattern in August. Oh, thanks, Curtis. Yeah, his birthday's coming up in like a week, a week tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's his birthday. This is all, this is why we do menswear, you guys. It's for all for Michael all month long because of his birthday. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.